At the Mobile World Congress, we focused very much about how we continue our evolution to be relevant for, for the operators around the world. We launched a couple of new products uh, for the network, everything from routers, small cells, uh, as well as the cloudifying or uh, virtualizing many of our products. At the same time, also we launched a lot of services in the IT stack for operators when it comes to OSS and BSS. And finally, we also launched applications and platforms where operators can make revenues. Everything from uh, uh, smart, uh, smart power metering, like the light poles with Philips. Uh, we also come out with our TV solution, TV Anywhere. All in all, it's really all these launches were geared in order to support customers when they go into the data world, when they go into the network society. I think that uh, there are many markets that are very different on maturity in Asia. So I think that all the launches we have done will be important or are already now important for Asia. For example, the indoor solution with the Ericsson Radio Dot system will be enormously important in Asia where the majority of all the connectivity is, is built on wireless and more and more of the sort of the usage of the mobile phones and the smartphones is indoor. So that's one. The other, of course, could be the TV solution that we have. I mean, TV will be consumed totally different in the future by the new generation. They're going to move content between a smartphone, a pad, over the top, or a normal TV. The solution we have done is that you can actually handle all that content. That will also be very relevant uh, for Asia. And finally, uh, when it comes to, for example, the light pole, the connected light pole that we're doing in Philips, I think it has a tremendous importance to this region where you both can get a new infrastructure for lighting in the cities. At the same time, you build a much more densified uh, connectivity uh, when it comes to radio base stations. That combination will both make the city more sustainable and more livable. So I think many of the solutions we came out in the Mobile World Congress will definitely have a big potential in, in the Asian markets. In general, what we see on a global basis is that our prediction is by year-end 2014, 50% of all subscribers in the world will have a smartphone. So, of course, the pickup is enormous all around the world, and that would go for Asia as well. But there are so many different countries in Asia uh, that are coming from different levels, but all will increase and grow dramatically in smartphone this year. And that, of course, will get a totally new user base. I mean, for the ones that remember and used feature phones and today are using smartphones, you know the difference how you use the network and what you are using the services for with these two different devices. So definitely we're going to see much more smartphones coming out in Asia this year in 2014. First of all, Ericsson has been around in many of these countries in Asia more than 100 years. Uh, we're of course all the time there given if it's going up or down the investment levels. But if we look right now, with this transformation, with the mobility, the broadband and the cloud services, which will transform many of the countries in Asia, I think that we have a great opportunity. Ericsson is building networks, supporting and running networks. On top of that, we're building software stack and platforms that is needed for making that to happen. So I think with a great customer relationship we have in this region, and the growing demand of the services that we're together with operates providing. I think there's a great opportunity for us in Asia. Uh, but we're long term. We're here to stay in all this market for a long, long time. And we will work with our customer to see that we can provide to the end consumers in this market great services when it comes to mobility, mobile broadband and cloud services. If you look at Asia, uh, first of all, uh, I think it's going to be varied between countries. Uh, on a global level, end of 2013, 200 million uh, 4G subscribers in the world. They were in three countries, two of them in Asia, Korea and Japan and US are having the highest penetration of 4G in the world. So of course, they will continue on that. Korea is very advanced as well as, uh, as Japan, a uh, very mature 4G market. On the other hand, we have market in this Asia, which has a very low penetration. India, for example, is 
just embarking on 4G and using so getting spectrum. So if you take the totality of Asia, still 3G will be the predominant uh, technology in the next five years when it comes to mobile broadband. But certain markets, they will have a high penetration of 4G as well. So it's a little bit more in maturity, how you convert your networks, how the spectrums are coming out to the market. And as well, very important, what is the cost for the consumer device, the mobile phone. That is very, very relevant in this region. Basically, 50% uh, of the LT traffic in the world was going through Ericsson uh, equipment. So we have a very good and solid base. Of course, very much based on the Korean, Jap Japan, Nice and US market where we have a very strong position. But it also indicates that the more advanced technology, Ericsson is very strong. And, and of course, on LTE, we're that. And we're both working with FDD and TDD solutions for LTE. And for us, that, that's very much uh, a combined technology from a hardware point of view, but also to, to a large extent on the software side. Uh, we have LTE contracts with the top 10 customers of the world based on revenue. Uh, and of course, when we talk about LTE, it's not only the radio access, it's also the evolved packet core, it's other subsystem that is needed to do 4G, as well as our services, which everything from deployment to optimization is included. So this is a very important business for us. And, and of course, we're in the forefront for 4G in the world.